It's got mushrooms and spinach. It's got more of a creamy base rather than a tomato base like my regular lasagna soup has. So I'm gonna cook the mushrooms first and I'm gonna crank the heat up to high. I started with a little bit of olive oil and I added a mix of sliced white mushrooms and sliced cremini mushrooms. And I'll add some salt and let them start to cook. It's gonna take five minutes to get these nice and brown. Okay, it's looking good. Look, Alex, I know it's hard to see over there, but I got these mushrooms going. They're starting to get kind of brown around the edges. So I'm gonna turn the heat to medium so things don't get too crazy too fast. And I'm gonna add minced garlic and minced thyme. This soup has such amazing flavor. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna get the garlic going and then Smell it. Italian seasoning, a little more salt, why not? And then I want to make this a creamy base. So I'm going to sprinkle just a couple of tablespoons of flour. I just kind of want to add enough to help the thickening process along without it getting too crazy. And I'm telling you what, this is the day of broth. Lots of liquid. Okay. Now I need to stir this until it starts to bubble and thicken up. Give me another three minutes. Okay, I can tell it's kind of starting to simmer around the sides. So this is a good time to add lasagna. Now, a lot of times when I make regular lasagna soup, I will boil the lasagna noodles separately, break them up, boil them, add them to the pot. I'm gonna use parboiled lasagna sheets which these are almost done, so you can actually build lasagna with these without cooking them ahead of time, so they're no cook noodles. And <laughs> I'm just gonna break them into chunks. And the great thing about adding them to soup is they just take a couple of minutes to soften and become soft pasta noodles. Oh, it's looking so good already. So it's a good time to season with salt and pepper. Yum, yum. And then it's kind of a white slash creamy lasagna soup. So while it comes to a boil, I'm gonna add some cream. And this is a personal preference. You can add as little or as much cream as you want. We can't forget the spinach. It's gonna go right in with it. And the thing about spinach is it takes a lot because it shrinks. So don't be alarmed at the amount of spinach I just added. All right, with that, the soup is done. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like, all served up, nice and piping hot. You would probably not make this soup in the middle of summer. <laughs> Look how just gorgeous and rich and magical it is. Here is how I like to finish it. Little dollops of ricotta, which kind of finishes off the lasagna vibe of this soup. You can kind of do little globs here and there. And then I'll just use the end of the spoon. <laughs> Pesto out of the jar. Mmm, this looks good. I'm not even gonna pick it up because it's too hot, but I have to taste so I can tell you guys what it's all about. Oh gosh, that's magical. It's lasagna dip and chips. I've just got ground beef and sausage browned. I'm gonna add a few more things. A can of diced tomatoes, juice and all, and a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste. Gotta have plenty of garlic in any lasagna dish. And then some salt and pepper. Keep things really seasoned for the season. I'm gonna stir this all together, and then it needs to simmer for 15 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna make the cheese mixture for the lasagna dip. And so I've got about a third a cup of the cottage cheese and ricotta and about a fourth a cup of the Parmesan. And then I wanna make this really herby and delicious. So I've got some chopped basil and chopped parsley and some salt and pepper. And then I'll just smush this all together. Okay, that is all mixed together. So now I'm gonna assemble the dip. It is a lot of fun. I'm gonna start with a layer of the meat sauce. 
I'll add half of it to the bottom of a square baking dish. Now I'll add dollops of the cheese mixture. Now as if that's not enough cheese, I am gonna add a layer of grated mozzarella. Okay, now I'll repeat the layers one more time, the rest of the meat mixture. All right, and another layer of the creamy ricotta mixture, the rest of the mozzarella, and that's all there is to assembling it. Now I've got to bake it at 425 degrees for 15 minutes. Noodle chips coming right up. I cut boiled and cooled lasagna noodles into triangles, put all 80 of them into a bowl, then added three tablespoons of olive oil, a third a cup of grated Parmesan, a tablespoon of chopped fresh oregano, mixed everything together, split the chips between two sheet pans, baked them at 375 degrees for 20 minutes, then took the crispy wonders out to cool. All right, now I wanna sprinkle some of these beautiful herbs over the top. Lasagna dip and chips, perfect for the holidays. I'm gonna make some pans of loaf pan lasagna. They're the perfect amount for two people. Really fun to make and assemble as well. I've got a big old pot and I've been browning some meat. Two pounds of Italian sausage and one pound of ground beef. I also added some minced garlic. It is totally brown. So now I'm gonna doctor it up with some good stuff. Two cans of whole tomatoes. You can also use diced if you like. I pretty much go with whatever I have in my pantry. I'm gonna add a whole can of tomato paste. Add such rich flavor. And then for some seasonings, a good tablespoon of dried parsley flakes. You can use fresh if you happen to have them nearby. And a tablespoon of dried basil. And then this is quite a bit of meat, so I'm gonna add a couple good dashes of salt. And then I'll stir all this around. Okay, this is all mixed together. Now I'm just gonna let it cook for 30 minutes and then I'll move on with the next steps. The meat sauce looks great, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. It's all done. So now I'll make the cheese filling mixture. It's really flavorful and it has the best of both worlds. I'm gonna add a cup and a half of ricotta cheese, which of course is traditional for lasagna. Then I'm also gonna add a cup and a half of cottage cheese. Okay, I'll add two eggs that I beat with a fork and some Parmesan cheese, about half a cup or so. And then I've still got the parsley flakes out, about a tablespoon of those. And salt, doesn't get any easier than this. And then I'll stir all this together. First, it's meat sauce, noodles, cheese mix, mozzarella. And repeat, meat sauce, noodles, cheese mix, mozzarella, then meat, noodles, meat, and Parmesan. One, two, three, pans done. Okay, I'm gonna cover these with foil and get them into the freezer. And while I do that, let me tell you what happens with cooking and serving up. I'll cook the lasagna from frozen at 350 degrees for one hour covered. Take the foil off and give it another 20 minutes. Yep, that looks just right. So half each onto the plates and it's perfect served with a side salad and a little bread. Ooh, I could eat that right now. I'm gonna start by breaking up some lasagna noodles and I'm gonna put them into a bowl and then they'll be ready to drop in the boiling water later. I've already got boiling water going. There's nothing worse than having a soup or sauce all ready and then you realize, oh no, I've gotta bring a big pot of water to a boil. I'm just breaking them into random pieces so you don't have to follow any sort of size. Got those on standby. And now I'm gonna slice up an onion. You just cut off the tip and then peel off the outer layer. This soup is one of my family's favorite things right now. It's kind of a mashup of lasagna and soup, which makes perfect sense. And I love things like that, where you take something like lasagna that you've made for years and years, 
and then you turn it into a completely different dish. So once you cut the onion in half, just lay it on its side and you can cut nice half moon slices, I call them. This is so much easier than slicing a whole onion because you have this flat surface that kind of stabilizes the onion. I don't have the fanciest knife skills out there, so I need all the little tricks I can get. Okay, I've just got the little bit. So the onion is sliced. I'm separating the onion slices. Now, of course, any lasagna recipe has to have plenty of garlic. So I've got four cloves. And the easiest way to break open a clove of garlic is just to take the knife, smash it with your hand. You can sort of think about the things that you're frustrated about this week. <laughs> Whack a clove of garlic. Everything instantly seems better. <laughs> you know, in the supermarkets, they sell bags of peeled garlic now, which is really a time saver if you use a lot of garlic in your cooking. I do confess to buying bags of peeled garlic cloves. So I'm actually a little rusty right now, peeling garlic. I forgot how. <laughs> All right, I'm just mincing the garlic and it just kind of takes gathering it up, holding the knife and just kind of rocking it back and forth. This is one of those things you can't rush. The more you mince it up, the more garlic flavor is gonna wind up in your dish. Are you having fun yet? I am, thank you for cooking with me. It's always more fun to cook with a friend than by yourself. Okay, the garlic is nice and minced. So I've also got a couple of fresh herbs, and they're two of my favorites, oregano and thyme. And I'll just strip the leaves off of the stalk, and I'll do the same thing to the thyme. Just hold the top and then take your fingers and just peel off the leaves. They come off so easily. Sometimes thyme is so delicate that you can actually just chop up the stalk along with the leaves. So I'm gonna mince these up together. There is no better smell than fresh herbs. I live in Oklahoma and we have four seasons. So when I don't have herbs growing in my garden, I'm just not as happy an individual. <laughs> okay got all this ready now I'm gonna get over to the pot and get things going I'm gonna add plenty of olive oil and I've already got the big Dutch oven preheated I just added about a fourth a cup of olive oil and then you want to grab these beautiful sliced onions Whoop. and this is why I wear floral or otherwise patterned tops so if I slosh a little olive oil on myself nobody will know and then the garlic goes in. It smells amazing already. It's crazy how quickly that happens. And then all of these beautiful fresh herbs go in. Oh, I'm gonna grab a spoon. So you just wanna stir the onions and garlic with the herbs and get those softened. Oh, just glorious. This is a great way to start any soup recipe at all. So these are getting off to a good start. So I'm going to add the meat. I'm doing a mixture of ground beef and then just some regular pork sausage. You can use Italian sausage. This is one of those recipes you can just open your fridge if you have some ground beef that you need to use. If you have a whole bunch of sausage, you can just omit the beef entirely. Do a sausage version. You could even do ground turkey. All of the recipes that I make are incredibly versatile, meaning if I'm out of something, I can swap in so many other things. I think that is the case because I live in the country and I've learned the hard way that if I run out of something I need, I'm out. I can't take the time to drive to town and go to the store. Okay, so you want to crumble up the meat, just kind of break it up with a spoon. And this is a good time to add some kosher salt. And this is the, not the last time you're going to see me grab the black pepper. I'm a big black pepper fan. 
And then it's just about stirring and cooking this until both meats are totally browned. So get up to that point and then we'll keep moving forward. All right, the meat is totally browned. It took about five minutes. This hot Dutch oven, it doesn't take long. Now, depending on how lean your ground beef is, it's always a good idea to drain any excess grease. So I just kind of tilt it. The goal for me is never completely removing all the grease because there is flavor in there. I just kind of get out the big pools of it but you wanna leave a little bit behind because it does add to the overall flavor of the soup. I think that's good enough. And there's still a little bit in the bottom of the pot and that's what you want. So now that the onions and garlic and meat are cooked, I'm gonna start adding the other soup ingredients. Add some tomato paste. And you want to stir the tomato paste in and let it really get against the bottom of this hot pan. It almost kind of fries the paste and deepens the flavor. It kind of wakes it up in a way. And you just want to stir it around for about 30 seconds before you start adding the other things. And by other things, I've got a little carafe of the hard stuff. It's actually not hard stuff. It's just white wine. You can use red wine, white wine, whatever you have handy. And it's good to use something that you already have open. You don't have to use fine wine when it comes to making a soup like this. Oh, the smell of wine wafting out of a pan. I think that's one of the smells in heaven. <laughs> Along with citrus, lavender. I have a list of smells in heaven. Okay, so now that the wine has partially evaporated, you wanna add a can of whole tomatoes, and you can do diced tomatoes, stewed tomatoes, you can even do tomato puree if you're somebody that doesn't like to have big chunks of tomatoes. When I make my regular lasagna recipe, it always has big tomato chunks, so I kinda wanted the soup to be similar. Now, some fancy chefs, get in there and squeeze the tomatoes with their hands. <laughs> I'm just gonna use the spoon. Every time I try to squeeze a tomato with my hand, it either squirts me in the eye or winds up in my hair. And I'm trying to look nice for you guys, so. <laughs> I'm just gonna let the spoon do all the squishing and mushing. I really love this soup. I have two teenage boys still at home. My daughters are out of the house now. So the meaty, hearty, really home-style recipes are really front and center in my house these days. Both of my boys play football, so having a soup like this ready to go when they get home from practice is just my favorite category of things to cook for them. Okay, all the tomatoes are broken up, so the liquid for the soup comes next. I'm using four cups of vegetable stock. You can use beef stock, beef broth, chicken stock, chicken broth. Really, you just kind of want a flavorful liquid of any kind. You could even use bouillon cubes and dissolve them in some boiling water. In a pinch, I've done that for sure. Give it a stir, and then I've got some fresh parsley. I already pulled some of the leaves off of some parsley stems, and there's nothing complicated about this. I am not precise when it comes to picking the leaves off of herbs. I don't have time to be precise in my life. <laughs> if there's a little stem in there, it's not gonna matter. And then with parsley, I like to chop it up, I call it kind of halfway, because I still like to see those pretty little flat leaves. You don't have to mince the heck out of it. All right, that looks fantastic. Now I'm gonna save some of this parsley for Another little component I'm gonna make in a minute. But I'll add some of it to the soup. Give it a quick stir. And then, I can't forget about my lasagna noodles. This is a good time to pour those in. All right, you need to bring the soup to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer and let it cook for 20 minutes. You need to cook the lasagna noodles. So take care of that and I'll see you back here in a bit. 
So how does your soup look? Mine looks pretty darn good. It's been simmering away. It got a little bit richer in color. Looking great. I drained the lasagna noodles. You want to do that about 10 minutes in. You don't want to cook them all the way because they're eventually going to go back into the soup and you do not want a mushy lasagna noodle. I'm going to wait on that because I'm going to make a really delicious ricotta mixture. It starts with ricotta cheese and you want to add some grated parmesan and the rest of the minced parsley that you cut up, add that in and then add some salt and pepper. This is very, very simple. In regular lasagna, you would make a ricotta mixture to put in between the layers of sauce and noodles. I'm going to turn these into little dollops. I kind of call them ricotta dumplings that go on top of the soup once you dish it up. Oh, and this happens all the time. I totally forgot to add the basil. <laughs> no harm, no foul. It's not too late. I'm going to pick off a few leaves. Talk about an herb that I love. Oh, gosh, there's no replacement for basil. It is delicious. And this is one of the herbs that is the hardest for me to get in the wintertime in Oklahoma. So for that reason, in the summertime, I really go crazy. I plant so much basil to the point that it's just coming out of my ears, basically. <laughs> Now, you can just kind of roughly chop the basil. I just rolled it up in a really rough ball. And I don't know if I can even call this chiffonade. I just kind of cut it into strips. And then you want to add the basil to the ricotta mixture. And now I can stir it up, <laughs> now that I've added everything. Sometimes when you forget an ingredient, it's no big deal, like with the basil. Even if you forgot it in the ricotta, you could sprinkle it over the soup. The worst thing to forget when you're in the kitchen is some kind of a baking ingredient. I have a chocolate sheet cake that I make, and even after all these years of making it from memory, every now and then I'll forget to add the baking soda. And I don't realize it until I pull the cake out of the oven, and it's basically a little flat chocolate pancake instead of a cake. <laughs> Those are some very dark days. All right, so it's good to have the ricotta mixture all ready to go. I'm going to get back over here to this beautiful soup, and I'm going to turn the heat way, way down. Now, I cannot leave well enough alone. This soup would be delicious as it is now, but if you add a little bit of heavy cream to the pot, it doesn't turn it into a creamy tomato soup at all. It just kind of takes the edge off of all of that tomato and all of that richness. Trust me, it is really good with the cream. If you want to omit the cream, that's totally fine too. Again, this is one of those recipes that's totally versatile. You can add a bunch of cream if you want. You can add a bunch of Parmesan to the soup. You can keep the Parmesan limited to the ricotta mixture. There are no rules in my kitchen. Hopefully it's the same in your kitchen. Now it's time for the broken up lasagna noodles. Those just go right in. And they're just under the al dente stage. You want to have a little bit of room for forgiveness because when it, the noodles simmer in the soup, they will keep cooking. How beautiful does this look? Now I'm actually going to get a few more leaves of basil just because I feel like it. This time, you can just tear them right in. No need to use the knife. Sometimes when I do things like this, I tell myself I'm being rustic, but I'm actually just being lazy. <laughs> I don't want to chop it up. How pretty does this look? All right, now just wait till you see it in the bowl. Okay. When you serve up this soup, you want to have a bowl that has somewhat of a wide rim so you can see all the gorgeousness. And I really like food to look pretty, so I make sure I get chunks of tomato, plenty of basil, of course, lasagna. I'm a lifelong pasta lover. Okie doke. 
And then I'm going to add a little bit more basil to the top. You can keep adding basil or not. I don't think you can ever have too much. And then I'm going to grab a little spoon. And this is how the ricotta mixture plays out. You just scoop a little bit of a round dollop and drop it right on. You can just do one, or you can do two. <laughs> Get on there. Or, if you're me, you can do three. <laughs> if one is good, three is better. That's my motto. And then as this sits in the soup, it's just going to get creamier and creamier. Look at this. I have a little extra Parmesan left in the measuring cup. A little more basil. <laughs> I told you I can't stop. Look at this soup, guys. I've been smelling it, and now I cannot wait to taste it. Oh, it is even more delicious than the last time I made it. It's so rich and meaty and hearty. Honestly, that cream really sends it over the top. It just kind of adds a richness. I taste the basil. I got a little piece of the ricotta. It's perfect. I'm adding three pounds of ground beef and two pounds of just regular pork breakfast sausage to a big pot. And then I'll add about five cloves of minced garlic. Now I'm just gonna cook the meat mixture until it's totally browned. I'm gonna add two 28 ounce cans of diced tomatoes. And then I'll add two cans of tomato paste. If you have the little cans of tomato paste, you'd actually need to add four cans. This is one of those recipes that I could seriously make in my sleep because my mom made it so much and I have made it so much. All right, now I'll just stir in all the tomato stuff. And I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. It's a lot of meat, so it needs some seasoning. I'll add some fresh herbs later. It just needs to simmer uncovered for about 45 minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna add half of the herbs to the sauce. And then I'm gonna save the rest of the herbs for the cheese mixture. Okay, the sauce is pretty much ready. So I'll go ahead and make the cheese mixture for the lasagna. I've got two big containers of cottage cheese. Even if you don't like cottage cheese by itself, it's delicious in this lasagna. My husband would not touch cottage cheese by itself to save his life, but he loves this lasagna. All right, now to the cottage cheese, I'll add four beaten eggs, and that helps bind the lasagna all together. And then a cup of grated Parmesan. Then I'll add a little bit of salt and pepper and mix it all together. The cottage cheese mixture is a little more mild than the ricotta flavor, so you really, really taste the meat and the sauce. All right, that's all stirred together. Now I'll just throw in the rest of the herbs, the parsley and the basil. All the elements are ready, and I'm gonna start assembling it. I'll lay four lasagna noodles in the bottom of these disposable foil pans. All right, on top of the layer of noodles, I'm gonna spoon a fourth of the cheese mixture right over the top. So I'll just spread that all over the noodles. Now on top of the cheese mixture, I'm gonna lay slices of mozzarella. Just a big old spoonful pretty much on top of each slice of cheese. All right, and spread that out. Now I'm gonna repeat the layer exactly like the first one. It needs to bake at 350 for about 45 minutes to an hour until it's hot and bubbly. I'll leave the foil on so the top won't get too burned. 